Hello there. Welcome to today's lesson. We are looking at unit of area and area of rectangle. And before we look at that, we just want to remind ourselves what we looked at in our previous lesson. The previous lesson, we were looking at perimeter. And we simply said that perimeter is the distance around the outside of a figure. So whenever you are having, for instance, we have this rectangle. And we need to get the perimeter of this given rectangle. Then it means we'll have the base and the height or the length and the width of that given rectangle. And when you have the length and width of the rectangle, then the perimeter of this given rectangle will be obtained by 2 into the base plus the height. Or in other cases, we use length and width. So we are having this as the perimeter of that given rectangle. But whatever we are looking at is the area. Now, let us start by asking ourselves, what units do we use in area? In perimeter, we discovered that we are using units like millimeters. Those are the units that we are using when we are dealing with perimeter. It is either the distance round the given figure is in millimeters, centimeters, meters, or in kilometers. But now, we want to find out how do we get the units of area of a given figure. So the metric units of area that we are going to look at, you remember when you looked at the units of measurement, we had the Egyptian, the metric, we had the Roman, and so on. So we want to deal with the metric units. But now we are looking at the units of area. So the first unit we have, so the first unit we have, first we need to understand that area is given in square units. So as we are looking at the metric units, we said that we have the millimeters, we have the centimeters, meters, and kilometers as the metric units. So we are talking about area, and we are saying that area is given in square units. So the first unit we have is square millimeters. When we are looking at the conversion of the metric units, we said that 10 millimeters is equal to 1 centimeter. 10 millimeters is equal to 1 centimeter. So if we are looking at area, then we are saying that we have square millimeters as a unit. That means we'll square both sides. If I square on the right hand side and square on the left hand side and the right hand side, then whatever I have is 100 millimeters or square millimeters will be equal to 1 square centimeter. So that means another unit of area we have is square centimeters. From there, we can now give a relationship between the centimeters and the meters. And we know that 100 centimeters is equal to 1 meter. So that means if 100 centimeters is 1 meter, if we are getting the units of area, then it means we get the square. And that means I'm squaring the left hand side, square the right hand side, so that if I square 100, we are getting 10,000 will be equal to 1 square millimeter. I mean 1 square meter. So that means 10,000 square centimeters is equal to one square meter. Then we talked about a thousand meters being equal to one kilometer. So we have a thousand meters is equal to one kilometer. Squaring on the both sides of our equation then gives us that a thousand squared will be one million. So that means that 1 million square meters 
will be equal to one kilometer squared. So these are the units of area that we have. Square millimeters, we are talking about square centimeters. We have square meters and we have square kilometers. So it is just important to note that area, the units of area are given in square units. So whenever you are given area of any given figure, then it means you have to give your area in square units. Why are we dealing with area in square units? Area is simply the space that is occupied by something. So that space that we have, if this is a rectangle, the space inside that given rectangle is whatever we are talking about as the area. Perimeter was the distance around the outside of that given figure. But area we are dealing with what is inside this given figure, this space inside the plane figure is whatever we are dealing with as the area of the given unit. After understanding the units that we use when calculating area of a figure, we can now go ahead and calculate area of rectangles. A rectangle is simply that figure that has its two opposite sides equal and the sides meet at 90 degrees. So this is whatever we mean. We said that the symbols, similar symbols indicate that the sides are equal. So this means that if I'm having a rectangle, then the two opposite sides of this given rectangle are equal. We need to get the area of this rectangle. So if this is the base and height of the given rectangle, then it means area of the rectangle will be given by base multiplied by the height. So area is given by base times height. And after understanding the formula of calculating area, then we can look at some few examples that require us to get the area of the given rectangle. So the first question we are having, we are required to get the area of this rectangle. And the base of our rectangle is 10 millimeters. The height of our rectangle is 4 millimeters. We are simply saying area is given by the base times the height. So this means that we are having our base is 10, our height is 4, and 10 times 4 gives us 40. We remember that our units for area is given in square units, so that means we were having millimeters as the units of length that we had, so this means our area will be square millimeters. So that means 10 times 40 gives us an area of 40 square millimeters. So the other rectangle we have has a base of 3.5 centimeters. It has a height of 2 centimeters. We are calculating the area and we are simply saying area will be the base times height, <coughs> which means that we have 3.5 times 2 and 3.5 times 2 gives us 7.0 square centimeters. So the area of this rectangle, which has a base of 3.5 and a height of 2 centimeters, will be 7 square centimeters. So another rectangle we have is a rectangle with a base of 1.7 meters and 0 0.8, height of 0 0.8, meters. So to get the area of this rectangle, then we have our area still is base times height or length times width, depending with whatever you prefer. So that our base is 1.7, our height is 0 0.8. So 1.7 times 0 0.8, you can go through the multiplication algorithm or we can use the calculators and get the required answer. So we have 
times 0 0.8. one point seven times zero point eight will give us one point three six square meters. So that is how we go about when we are calculating area of a rectangle. It is not always that you will meet a rectangle. The same same procedure is taken if you are having a square. So supposing the figure that you have is a square and you are required to get the area of that given square. How do you go about it? You simply get the base of that square, get the, the height of the square. Then the area will be calculated by base times height. So we are still having the same procedure for a square. Just for to take us through, let us just look at one or two examples that will help us understand how we work out area of a square. So a square is simply that figure that has all of its sides, all the four sides equal. So this is an example of a square I have. The square is of sides 2.5 centimeters. We need to calculate the area of this given square and we know that all the sides are equal, so if I've been given my base to be 2.5 centimeters, then it means that the height is also 2.5 centimeters. So calculating the area, then it means I'm having area will be the base times height, or some other book talk about side times side, and so on, so that the base I have is 2.5, the height is also 2.5. So we have 2.5 times 2.5, which will give us 6.25. Our units are centimeters, so it means we are talking about area. So this will give us square centimeters. So the area of that given square is 6.25 square centimeters. So next we have a square of 0.9 meters the sides of our square is 0 0.9 meters and we need to get the area of this square so our area is given by base times height so we have 0 0.9 times 0 0.9 which will give us 0 0.81 square meters so the area of this given square will be 0 0.81 square meters. So at times we are given square grids that a figure is drawn on it and we are required to find the area simply by counting the square grids. So what do we do about it? Supposing we have a figure that has been drawn on this square grid that I have, and we are required to get the area of that given figure. How do we go about it? Let me just try and draw a figure on this square grid. Then from there, we calculate the area of that given figure. So the shaded region is indicating the figure that we are required to get its area. So when you are having a square grid and you are required to get the area of that given figure, we simply calculate the area by counting. And how do we go about it? Count the number of full squares, then count the number of half squares, divide it by two, then get the sum of the two. So the first thing is get the number of full squares that we have. So in this case, how many full squares do we have? We have one, two, three. So full squares are three. Then 
half squares. How many half squares do we have? And we get that we have one, two. So there are two half squares. So what we do is, we will have the number of half squares multiplied by a half, so that we have two half squares multiplied by a half, which gives us one. Then that means the area of this given figure will be obtained by adding whatever we've obtained here. Full squares are three, half squares were two, we multiply it by a half so that we have one. So that means the total area of this given figure that has been drawn on this square grid will simply be three plus one, which gives us four. In case you've been told the units of the square boxes, then it means that you will indicate the square units given in the box. But in this case, we do not have the units, so it means our units will be square units. So this means that the area of this given figure on our grid is four square units. This is obtaining the area by counting. So after looking at our rectangles, we move on and get the area of triangles. First, let us just find out what a triangle is. We've been dealing with a rectangle. So when I decide to get, to divide the rectangle into two halves using the diagonals, that means I'll obtain the two shapes. We have the upper shape and we have the lower shape. So it simply means that whatever I've obtained here which is half of my rectangle through the diagonal is whatever we are referring to as a triangle. So this is a triangle that has been left on this given board. So how do we get area of this given triangle? First, when we are talking about a rectangle, we said that a rectangle is given by base times height. This is for a rectangle. That our area of the rectangle is base times height. But now we discover that a triangle has been obtained by simply getting the rectangle, getting the two halves of this given rectangle. So that means this triangle, for me to get the area of the triangle that has been left here, it was the full rectangle was base times height, but now it is half of that given rectangle. Then it means the area of the triangle will be a half the base times the height. Or alternatively, people are talking about a half base times height, or this is just the same as base times height divided by two. So area of a, tr a triangle is obtained by a half the base times the height. So let us look at some few examples involving a triangle and find out how do we go about it when we are working out area. So we have the question. We find the area of the triangle given and we have the triangle that has a base of eight meters and the height is four meters. It is important to note that the height is obtained by whatever brings about the perpendicular. We are talking about what will drop to the base at right angle is whatever we are looking at as the height. So in this case our height is 4 meters, our base is 8 meters. So we need to get the area of this given triangle our area is given by a half base times height. So that means we have a half times eight times four. So this means that two into two once, two into eight, four. 
and 4 times 4 gives us 16. Our units will be square meters. So that means a triangle that has a base of 8 meters and height of 4 meters has an area of 16 square meters. So the second example we have, we have a triangle. Looking at this triangle, we discover that we have the dotted part. So it means the figure that we are looking at is this. But we talked about the perpendicular line. That perpendicular line is what is supposed to give us the height. So this dotted line is simply supposed to help us get the perpendicular line to the base. So our base in this case is 7 kilometers. Then we need to get the perpendicular line to the base and our perpendicular line to the base is obtained at this end so that our height will be also 7 kilometers. So that means to get the area of this given triangle, the area is a half base times height, so that means I have a half multiplied by our base, which is 7 kilometers, times the height, which is also 7 kilometers. So that 2 into 2 we have once, 2 into 7 we have 3.5. So we have 3.5 times 7. That should give us 24.5 square kilometers. So it is just important as we are working out area, remember that the units of area are given in square units. So whatever units of length you've been given, just calculate the area and indicate the units in square units. So our area in this case, our length was in kilometers, that means our area will be in square kilometers. So the next example we have, we have a triangle that has a base of 1 meter and a height of 2.4 meters. We need to get the area and you're saying that area is given by a half base times height. So that means we have a half, our base is 1 meter, our height is 2.4 meters. So that 2 into 2 was... 2 into 2.4, we have 1.2, and we get our area is 1.2 square meters. So in short, the area of this given triangle that has a base of 1 meter and height of 2.4 meters is 1.2 square meters. So we've looked at area of a rectangle, we've looked at area of a triangle. The next thing we need to find is area of a parallelogram. How do we get area of a parallelogram? It is important to recall that a parallelogram is a four-sided figure that has two of its opposite sides parallel to one another and equal, then another property about a parallelogram is that the opposite angles are equal. So whatever we are talking about, that two opposite sides are parallel, the arrows are indicating that the two opposite sides are parallel, they are also equal, then we are talking about this side is parallel to that and it is also equal. Then we are saying that the opposite angles, this angle should be equal to that angle and this one should be equal to the other angle. So that we have the two opposite angles are equal, the two opposite sides are equal and parallel to one another. So this is what we are talking about as a parallelogram. A parallelogram is simply a twisted rectangle. So you're having one, a rectangle that has been pushed to one side so that whatever has been formed is a parallelogram. So how do we get 
area of this given parallelogram? How do we find area of a parallelogram? So I've just drawn a parallelogram on the board and indicated the sides of that given parallelogram. So it means this parallelogram has a base and it has that perpendicular height that drops to the base. First, we started by saying that a parallelogram is simply a twisted square, so you, a, a rectangle that has been twisted to one side. So we discovered that there was its original height of that given rectangle before it was twisted. So the base of the rectangle, then you obtain the height of that given, the base of the parallelogram, then get the height of the parallelogram. So the area of this parallelogram will simply be given by the base times the height. So base times height will give us the area of the parallelogram. And how do we get this height? Our height should be a perpendicular bisector to the, I mean a perpendicular line to the base. So that perpendicular line to the base will give us the height of that given parallelogram. So we simply get the base of the parallelogram multiplied by the height of that given parallelogram. So let us just look at some few examples that are involving a figure that has a shape of a parallelogram that is requiring us to get its area. So we have a parallelogram on the board that has a base of 10 meters and a height of 4 meters. We need to get its area. We are simply saying that area is given by base times height. So our base is 10, our height is 4. This is the height, this is the base. So that means our area will be 40 square meters. So the second example, we have a parallelogram that has a base of 3 kilometers. It has a height of 12 kilometers. We are required to get the area. So that means area is base times height, which then gives us a base of 3, height of 12. So we get 36 square kilometers, 36 square kilometers will be our area of this given parallelogram. So that our base is 3 kilometers, our height is 12 kilometers, so 3 times 12 gives us 36 square kilometers. So we are simply, the concept simply is get the perpendicular height find out what your base is. Try and identify from the parallelogram that you've been given what is your base and what is your height. Then after you've identified the base and the height, then it is simple. Go ahead and work out the area by simply using the formula base times height. So that will, will give you the area of that given parallelogram. So the, another example we have is a parallelogram that has a base of 7 meters and a height of 2.5 meters. We are required to get its area. So we are saying that area is given by base times height. Our base is 7 meters. Our height is 2.5. So that means the area will be 7 times 5 gives us 35. 7 times 2 is 14, 14 plus 3, we have 17. Then we had one decimal place, so that means it is 17.5. So that our area will be 17.5 square meters. So we are having 7 times 2.5, 7 being our base, 2.5 being our height, so that we get 17.5 square meters as the area of our parallelogram. So I'm having two figures on the board and the two figures we have, the first figure, this one, is a parallelogram. The second figure is a rectangle. 
what is happening is we can just simply see that this parallelogram was obtained from this rectangle so that we are having a base of 10 and a height of 5 for the rectangle. Here we have a base of 10. We do not know the value of the perpendicular height, but the slanting side is also 5 centimeters, just like whatever we had in that rectangle. The question is, if we get to calculate the area of this parallelogram and the area of this rectangle, will we get the same figure? Keeping in mind, we are saying that area of a rectangle will be given by base times height, where our height is the perpendicular line that will drop to the base. The same thing is happening for this parallelogram, that the area of this parallelogram is simply the base times the height, where our height should be the perpendicular bisector. I mean the perpendicular line that is dropping to the base. So we are having that perpendicular line at that point. Taking a good look at our diagram, we are finding area of this rectangle. They have the same same measurements. We are finding the area of the parallelogram. The question is, is it, are we going to get the same values? And the answer is simply no. Why? Because whatever we are having here as the height of this rectangle is not the same as the height of our parallelogram. The heights are different. With that one of a parallelogram, slightly smaller than that one of the rectangle because after twisting it, this distance has been reduced. So we have a smaller height for our parallelogram with the same, the, the parallelogram that has just been obtained from the rectangle. So what does that mean? The area of this parallelogram will be slightly smaller than the area of our rectangle. So it means that area of parallelograms that have been obtained from a given rectangle are slightly smaller than the area of the original rectangle because the height has been changed in this case. We, we are not using the same height. So the height having been changed means that the value of our area will be slightly different. So we've looked at area of a rectangle, we've looked at area of a triangle, and we've looked at area of a parallelogram. I want us to go a step higher and find the area of composite figures. We first, earlier on when you're looking at perimeter, we looked at composite figures and we said that a composite figure is that figure that is containing more than one of the basic figures that we've talked about. It has either a square and a rectangle or it has a square and a triangle, it has a square and a parallelogram somewhere, it has a rectangle and a triangle and so on. So when it has more than one of the basic figures, then we say that we have a composite figure. So how do we go about finding area of the composite figure? It is simple, when you have a composite figure, just get the area of the basic figures that are making up those that composite figure, after getting the area of the basic figures, you add to get the area of the composite figure. So we have an example on the board. We are, we are required to find the area of the composite figures that we are going to draw, and one of the composite figure is here. So we discover that this composite figure is made up of two basic figures. We have a triangle and we have a rectangle. So we simply get the area of this given triangle, get the area of our rectangle, and add. So how do we get, if I start, let me name this as the first figure, maybe A, and this is figure B. So the area of the first figure, that is A, will be given by a half base times height because it is a triangle. So we need to identify what is our base, what is our 
height in the diagram. And we said that the height is simply that perpendicular line that is dropping to the base. So we are looking for a point where we have a perpendicular line. And we get that the perpendicular line, a point where we are having the 90 degrees is at this point. So our height is 10. Our base is 40. We are saying that this is a rectangle, meaning the two opposite sides are equal. So being the two opposite sides being equal, if this is 40 millimeters, then this one is also 40 millimeters. So our high, our base is 40 millimeters, our height is 10 millimeters. So the area will be a half times 40 times 10. 2 into 2 once, 2 into 40, 20. Then we have 20 times 10, which gives us 200 square millimeters. Next, we have the rectangle. So the rectangle, its area is given by base times height. So we have the base times height as the area of that given rectangle. Our base is 40 millimeters. This is our height. Our height is 10. So we have 40 times 10, which gives us 400 millimeters squared or square millimeters. Then we need to get the area. Area of this composite figure, we are simply adding whatever we've obtained. The area of the triangle and the area of the rectangle. So when we add, we have We have 200, which was the area of the triangle, and 400, which was area of the rectangle, so that we have 200 plus 400 to get 600 square millimeters. So the area of the composite figure that we have on the board is 600 square millimeters. So another composite figure that we have is here and we need to get its area. So how do we go about it? Let us find out which basic figures are available in our composite figure. So we can get these figures so that if I get a parallel line to whatever I have as seven meters here, this will give me a square so that if this is six, seven meters, this one will also be seven meters. Then we are told that this, this distance is two meters and the whole of that figure is, the whole of this distance is six meters. So meaning whatever is left here will be six minus two so that we have four meters on that side. Then we can still have another figure which is a triangle at this point, so that this triangle is having a height of two meters. It has a base of three meters. So we have a height of two meters and a base of three meters. Then from there, this is another rectangle that we have on top, so that this distance, if what we have here is three meters and the whole of that is seven meters, meaning whatever we are left with at this point will be seven minus three, which will give us four meters. So this is four meters, this is three meters to give us a total of seven. Then we are having two meters at this end, so this means that this one, this line and this one are equal, which gives us also two meters. From that point, then we can be able to calculate the areas of the given figures that we have in that composite figure. So starting with the first one, the rectangle that is there, we are saying that area of a rectangle is given by base times height. Our base is four, our height is two. So four times two will give us eight square meters. The next one is the triangle. We are having area of a triangle as a half base times height. So our triangle has a base of three. So we have a half times three. The height is two. 
so that two and two will cancel out and you are left with area of three square meters next whatever is left down here is still a rectangle and a rectangle is given by base times height so that we have a base of seven multiplied by a height of four and seven times four will give us 28 square meters so the total area of our composite figure will simply be obtained by adding whatever values we've obtained so this means we have eight eight plus three plus 28 8 plus 3 gives us 11. 11 plus 28 is 39. So the area of our composite figure is 39 square meters. So we have another composite figure on the board. And this composite figure is a trapezium. A trapezium is made up of a rectangle and a triangle and triangle. So this one has two triangles on the left hand side and the right hand side. And we are required to get the area of this given trapezium. So what we can do is when we are having a trapezium, we all know that the this trapezium we are saying it is made up of a rectangle and a triangle. We know that area of a rectangle is given by base times height. Then the area of a triangle is given by a half base times height. And we need to get to have the area of our trapezium. So how do we get area of this given trapezium? Area of a trapezium will be obtained by we are having the two parallel sides so the area of the trapezium is obtained by a half of the two parallel sides so we have this side and this side, the sum of the parallel sides, then multiply by the height. We are having the area of the rectangle, we have the area of the triangle, then the two are added. But in this case, we do not have the measurements at this point. So that is why we are required to introduce the area of that given trapezium. So that the half is supposed to be the formula on the triangle. So then we have the two opposite sides that will give us the base. Then we have the height of that given trapezium. So that means that area of our trapezium is a half into A plus B, then multiplied by the height. So we have a half, our A and B we are saying are the two parallel sides. So that is six plus 10, then multiplied by the height. The height is whatever is giving us the perpendicular line, which is five. So this means I have a half times 16 times five, which is 12 into, I mean two into 16, eight, and eight times five will give us 40. 40 square meters. So this is how we get area of composite figures. We are simply saying that area of composite figures will be obtained by adding the various areas of the basic figures that are in that given composite figure. So what we need to find out is, supposing you've been given the unit of area in one unit and you're required to convert it 
to the other unit. How do we go about it? We've already looked at the units of area. We've talked about square millimeters, square centimeters, square meters, and square kilometers. Those are the metric units that we have. And you are required to convert from one unit to another. How do you go about it? So just to sum up whatever we've been doing, because you can be given all those calculations and you are asked at the end of it to convert from one unit to another, we need to find out how do we go about the conversion. So let us just look at conversion of the units of area. So we are having the units of area on the board and how we convert from one unit to another. We already looked at the units earlier on, so that 100 square millimeters is equal to one square centimeter. We are talking about 10,000 square centimeters is equal to one square meter, and one million square meter is equal to one square kilometer. And we are introducing another unit of area, which is hectares, and you're saying that 10,000 square meters is equal to one hectare. So how do we go about it? Just the way we were looking at conversion earlier on of length, when you are dealing with a smaller unit to a larger unit, then we divide. And when you are moving from a larger unit to a smaller unit, then we multiply. So for instance, when you are moving from mil square millimeters to centimeters, we will multiply by 100. When you are moving from square, I mean we will divide by 100. When you are moving from square centimeters to square meters, you are going to divide by 10,000. When you are moving from square meters to square kilometers, you are going to divide by 1,000. When you are moving from square meters to hectares, then you are going to divide by 10,000. And the reverse, you are going to be multiplying. When you are moving from hectares to square meters, then you are going to multiply by 10,000. When you are moving from square kilometers to square meters, you are going to multiply by 1 million. When you are moving from a square meter to a square centimeter, then you are going to multiply by 10,000. And from a square centimeter to square millimeters, you are going to multiply by 100. So these are the conversion that we have. So after calculating the areas of various figures, you can, a question can require you to convert from one unit to another. Then that means we have to deal with these conversion units that we have. If the question requires us to give the answer to the specific unit, then go ahead and convert. Give the answer to the required unit. So I want us to consider this composite figure that we have, and we are required to convert our area. We give the answer in hectares. So we are required to give the area of this given figure in hectares. So this is a composite figure. We need to calculate its area. We are saying that when you're having a composite figure, get the area of the basic figures that are making up the composite figure. So we have the triangle and we have the rectangle part. We get the area of the two parts and add. So we have the first part, a half base times height, so that we have a half times three, no, times our base is 7, our height is 3. This gives us 21 over 2, which is 10.5 square meters. Then next we have 7, which the area of the rectangle part that is base times height, which is 7 times 5 to get 35 square meters. So the total area of our composite figure will be 10.5. So we have 10.5 plus 35, which gives us 45.5 square meters. We are required to give our answer in hectares. So that means we convert from the square meters to hectares. And we are saying that 10,000 square meters is equal to 
one hectare. So 10,000. So that means 10,000 square meters is one hectare, but about 45.5 square meters. So that will mean we have 45.5 divided by 10,000. When you are dividing by powers of 10, we move our decimal place to the left. So that will, we are moving four steps to the left, and we find that our answer is 0 0.00455 hectares. So with that, I'm hoping that we can be able to work out areas of various figures that we've looked at. That is area of a rectangle, a triangle, a composite figure, we are talking about area of a parallelogram and so on. So any figure that you've been given, I'm hoping that by this time we are in a position to work out the various areas of those figures and we can be able to convert the area from one unit to another. Thank you.